If you do believe that women should be subject to laws, then that means you believe women should be subject to all kinds of violence, including being beaten, jailed, even executed. Cook me dinner. Okay, husband. Wash my clothes. Okay, husband. If you fear disobedience from her, you can beat her up as with a Quran. And that means Islam and human rights are in 100% agreement that women should be beaten. We only differ on who should do the beating. Hello? Have you even heard what we're talking about human rights? They've reformed all that and threw it out because they're cucking to modernity. Baby, I love you, but you left your uh, clothes um, outside and rained again. Boom! Anyway, now let's talk about the rights Sharia gives to women. I'm sure you have a script written for that too, because you knew I would bring that up. Needless to say that their statement is worth half of that of a man, meaning they're not equal. Quran 2282, they get half of the inheritance compared to the male counterparts. Quran 411, female captives can be used as sex slaves. But above all, the biggest setback for women, especially Muslim women, is that their male counterparts can physically discipline them as Quran 434 instructs. Forget about how... Muslims interpret this verse, but its true manifestation can be seen from one of your own videos where once a Muslim, not, not an atheist, not an ex-Muslim, a Muslim who hadn't turned off his compassion switch, like you have told, like you have, told you, this is not how Muslims treat women like you do. And you replied to him by asking, don't you want a woman who obeys you? Yes, you need an obedient servant, not an equal life partner with whom you build a relationship of trust, love on the basis of equality. Yes, you have this, your own worldview of, uh, of preserving family and marriage and fertility rate and all that. Is this how you want to do it? You know what? Probably better if human, if human race goes extinct. You build it upon how much she obeys you. Cook me dinner. Okay, husband. Wash my clothes. Okay, husband. If you fear disobedience from her, you can beat her up as per the Quran. Societies that build upon concepts like human rights will outlaw this because they say human rights, not man's rights alone. My partner or wife will simply say, go cook your own food. And I'll be like, OK, honey, in your article, my sister, you were talking about violence against women. And you said people who commit violence against women, you would only say that don't leave them in a room with you, which is a respectable position to take. But honest, is it according to your worldview? Is it honest? Would you beat up the second caliph, Umar bin Khattab, who beat up Abu Bakr's sister when she wouldn't stop crying? Aisha even forbade Umar's vagabond, what was his name, um, anyway, whatever his name was, from entering her house. But he said, go in and bring me the daughter of Abu Kuwafa, Hisham was his name, went in and brought her out where Umar bin Khattab gave her a number of blows as recorded in Ibn Hisham, page 137 to 138. There are actually quite a few stories where Umar actually acted like a total tool. For example, once Umar saw a Persian slave girl wearing a scarf that belonged to Anas, and Umar gave her a number of blows saying, don't assume the manners of free women. Al-Albani in his book, Arwal Ghalil, volume 6, page 204, declared the narration as perfect. Once Ashat bin Kas went to stay at Umar's house, and he woke up in the middle of the night. When he heard Umar beating the hell out of his wife, when he tried to stop Umar, guess what Umar said? Umar said, Prophet, peace be upon him, told me never ask a man when he's beating his wife. So in Ibn Majah, 1986. I want to know what would happen if you were left alone in, in the room with Umar. You'd like to say that you don't want to be left alone with those people because I'm assuming that you're not going to sit down and pay, play Monopoly with them. You're going to probably give them some... Some, uh, some of the taste of their own medicine, or would you not? Or you might just worm your way out of it by saying, well, he was the enforcer of Allah's command, and so all's fair. Sure, if that's the way you want to go, I'll just leave it to the people to decide which world they would want to live in, because the society I live in ensures even a criminal doesn't get tortured to extract information. You got it. We'll go to a five-minute response from Daniel. And a couple of things, folks. Shortly, just a little bit here, we'll be going into the open dialogue and also, just at a poll, interesting to see, we asked what people identify as. We had 41% identify as Muslim, then 36% atheist, other 11%, and then Christian was 10%, which we're excited about having that kind of variety of people. We do hope you feel welcome, no matter what walk of life you're from. And with that, go ahead, Daniel, the floor is all yours for five minutes. Okay, again... Um... Harris is just gish galloping. He's throwing everything out there. I'm going to actually respond with arguments. I'll just respond to this uh, wife beating argument. Um, you know, simple question, Harris. Uh, do you believe women should be subject to laws? 
If you do believe that women should be subject to laws, then that means you believe women should be subject to all kinds of violence, including being beaten, jailed, even executed. That's what it means to be subject to the law. So there really is no difference between Islam on quote unquote wife beating and human rights on this issue. Both Islam and human rights are in 100% agreement that women are accountable if they break the law. And that means Islam and human rights are in 100% agreement that women should be beaten. We only differ on who should do the beating. You say only the state. Only the state can punish women. Only the state should have a monopoly on all power and authority. Islam says, no, power should be distributed across kinship groups. And this means that the patriarch has authority to physically discipline members of his family, including his wives, if they violate important norms and values. Now let's ask women, if you violate the law, Shouldn't you face consequences? And if you have to face consequences, who would you rather mete out those consequences? The cold iron fist of the bureaucratic technocratic state or the person who loves you the most in the whole world? The other important difference is that with the technocratic state, there is no higher authority. If the authoritarian modern state wants to persecute a particular woman, she has no recourse beyond the authority of the state. But in Islam, the husband is not the highest authority. If he is unjust to his wife or if he causes serious abuse, then the wife can take him to the Islamic court and get paid damages. Or she can complain to her extended family and make her case so that other patriarchs can intervene and actually punish her uh, husband. This is an organic system, and we see similar systems in all traditional cultures, Native American culture, even Christianity, read the Bible, even Judaism, read the Bible. They all have these kinds of rules. Nowadays, they've, they've kind of reformed all of that. Islam is the only religion that's really honest on this. Look, let me put it like this. Is it possible to run a corporation without the possibility of physical discipline? No. You have to give managers in these corporations the right to beat their employees. How do you beat your employees? Well, if the employee violates the norms of the workplace, they get fired. And if they do not voluntarily comply, security will be call called to remove them by force. Managers have to have the right to beat their employees. If they didn't have the right, you couldn't have a hierarchical organization. Islam recognizes this about family. Patriarchy is hardwired into our DNA. Neurobiologists, psychologists, they all acknowledge this. Women are naturally hypergamous, which means they're attracted to men who are stronger than them and higher status than them. Men that they can be dependent on, men that are authorities over them. If you take out the patriarchy, this actually significantly reduces female attraction to their husbands. And they have studies on this where they ask women if they are more attracted to the macho man patriarch or a man who is at their same level in terms of size, strength, and status. And all women, including the hardcore feminists, prefer the higher status male. So if you promote egalitarian marriage, such as in human rights, you basically are ensuring less attraction, and that means less stable marriages. And this exact, is exactly why marriages in the modern West have collapsed, because they're egalitarian. Islam says, no, if you want a strong society, you have to have strong families. And if you, have, and if you want strong families, they have to be patriarchal. And if they're patriarchal, that means the man has authority. And if he has authority, that means he has the power to physically maintain order. This is all a coherent, holistic system, and it's backed and underwritten by human biology, human psychology, that is universal across all human societies. It's hardwired into us. That's why this is an objective argument, Harris. You can't really understand that. I hope your followers, these Christians who are listening, these Hindus that are listening, I hope they're following, because this stuff is in their books as well, in their cultures as well. They've reformed all that and threw it out because they're cucking too much modernity, but Muslims are not going to do that. We don't need to change our religion because it's revealed from God to the creator of human beings. The creator of human beings knows our psychology, knows our biology, and that's why he has revealed this sharia, this sharia for the benefit and flourishing of humanity. And all of the statistics are proving this. You can't even respond to a single one. Go ahead, Harris, for five minutes.
All right. Okay. So let's just go through some of his points. He says, uh, so would I want women to subject to law? Of course, I would want them to subject to law. If they commit crime, they need to go to prison. But where you, but then you extended well, it. Now this is no. Well, sorry, please don't interrupt. I mean, I, I, yeah, as painful as it was listening to your babble, but then you know, I, 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 I kept my uh, patience there. So, but you said you extended your seventh century mentality or your. Or, or, or your backward mentality, saying that so that means they would be subject to beatings and tortured and even sentenced to death. Hello, have you even heard what we're talking about? Human rights. Us human rights activists, we don't support sentenced to death. We don't support torture, like the torture of Kinana and those on those men that that Prophet Muhammad said that go and drink camel urine. But like we don't support that beating. We don't support that. So there is imprisonment which is within reason. Yes, it's not ideal, but this is within reason. But at least we don't support torture. Yes, I know that. If I beat a donkey, the donkey would probably be tamed. And this is the same mentality that you guys invent, applied on human beings. A powerful person applies a force to scare them, intimidate them, and gets them under the, under their thumb. Yes, we know that. It does work. Duh, it does work. But should it work? Because now we're not thinking about the powerful, we're thinking about the weak. This is why we're saying, no, women should not be beaten. Now you say, okay, so who would you rather have them? So I've already said that we wouldn't be beating torture centers to death, just subject to law, meaning humane laws, such as imprisonment, uh, with a full chance of parole and rehabilitation, and not to seek vengeance. Only, um, uh, so who would you want them to punish, uh, punish by? Well, the state or someone who loves them. I almost, you know, I had to mute my mic when you said that, or who, who loves them. Like a husband loves you. Baby, I love you, but you, you know, left the, left your uh, clothes um, outside and it rained again. Boom. That's what you mean, love? This is what you're saying? No, Daniel, as I said, this is not uh, in accordance with uh, with our worldview of human rights. Um, you said, um, what was the pathetic analogy that you gave? That was about what, uh, if you could beat the employees. Okay, again, see, you have to work on your analogies as well because you said beat the employees. And I was thinking, what? Which corporations are beating their employees? But then you were using that as a synonym for firing them. There's a huge difference between firing someone and physically beating them. Yes, if you drag someone again, that is a different action. It's not equivalent of beating. It's like, what is worse, coughing, pushing, shoving, or actually cutting off someone's hand or a full-on fist in someone's face. These things are very simple to understand, but you can't understand that because you can't get your mind out of the 7th century ideology. Well, Harris is saying that the state doesn't torture and abuse people. Hello, didn't you hear all of that statements I made about colonialism? How the state is genociding people, torturing people, raping women. The state powers, the human rights nations that you're defending in this whole debate, Harris, have raped how many women, have imprisoned how many women, have tortured through solitary confinement and war waterboarding how many women? OK, so <laughs> you are a totalitarian because you only trust the state to have this kind of power. In Islam, men can't uh, uh, torture their wives. In Islam, men can't, according to the Sharia, men cannot, you know, even physically hurt their wives in, in a permanent kind of way. And you're you don't it's clear that you don't understand the employee employer example because in most cases the employee if the employer says your manager says do this uh you are part of an organization there's a hierarchy and there's a relationship between the manager and the employee so the manager says you know we need to get this done and everyone works together there's no need to call security and physically remove right by force and use a nightstick or a gun or a taser to remove employees similarly in islamic law uh that that kind of thing doesn't happen it only happens rarely rare uh, as rare as it would be for these corporations to physically remove and taser their employees so this there's complete parallel here between any because you have to have uh the ability to enforce uh, structure and norms with any hierarchical organization. And Islam is just saying that 
families have that kind of authority and the patriarch has that kind of authority. It's not unfettered authority. It's not unchecked authority, but he has that in the same way that many institutions, hierarchical institutions in the modern world West, human rights respecting West, they have those kinds of authorities and the right to beat people as well. The only difference is you think that only the state only the totalitarian, bureaucratic, technocratic state should have those kinds of rights. So th there's not really a substantive difference there, and we can talk about it more if you need more explanation. 